the American way of death. Our species has a 100% mortality rate, and although we'd rather not talk about planning our own funeral or the final tribute to a loved one, we are consumers in the crosshairs of the funeral industrial complex. An expert has tips for being a smart shopper. I'm Holland Cook in Washington. This is The Big Picture on RT America. Complete this sentence. There's nothing sure but death and taxes. And with April 15 looming, we're thinking about taxes. Tax planners help us avoid overpaying. But how can we avoid getting ripped off planning a funeral? It's often a moment where we're emotionally unsettled. Let's ask Gail Rubin, whose registered trademark is the doyenne of death. She is the author of A Good Goodbye, Funeral Planning for Those Who Don't Plan to Die, and Kicking the Bucket List, 100 Downsizing and Organizing Things to Do Before You Die, which, along with her TED Talk, you can find at agoodgoodbye.com. Gail, welcome from Albuquerque. Oh, and great to be with you. I chuckled. Critical and functional. <laughs> I chuckled aloud when I read on your website that talking about sex won't make you pregnant and talking about funerals won't make you dead. And I noted that you are the first certified thanologist I've met. Now, what is that? And how important is it to, as tasteful advertising terms, pre-plan. Uh, the term comes from the Greek demigod Thanatos, who was the personification of a good death. And let's face it, even though we might eat right and exercise and see our doctors for all of our regularly scheduled visits, despite great advances in medical care, humans do still have a 100% mortality rate. And yet less than 30% of adults do any end of life planning. That's wills or trusts, advanced medical directives, and pre-need funeral planning. So it's very important to do this because if we don't, the 70% or more of our loved ones who are in our families are not going to be able to be prepared. They're going to be scrambling to pull information together and make expensive decisions under duress of grief and it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I'm living proof that you can be talking about death all the time and it won't kill you. <laughs> well, you're right, and none of us are getting out of here alive. And here's a phrase that everybody watching should Google, the FTC funeral rule from the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, Gail, most of the tips here seem like smart shopper 101, right? Yes, well, you know, buy only the funeral arrangements that you want. In fact, when you go shopping at a funeral home, they may offer package deals, which could be discounted if you buy the whole package, but it might have elements that you don't want. But unless you shop around ahead of time, you don't know if a package deal or items would be better for your budget. Uh, to get a written itemized price list when you visit a funeral home, the, this funeral rule was passed in 1983 before the, the creation of the internet. People are looking online now for information and a lot of funeral homes do not put their price lists on their websites. So yes, going there in person or calling them on the phone and getting a price list is how you can get that information from the funeral home. Although there are websites now uh, such as funeralocity.com or parting.com that put up by market the prices for various funeral homes. Uh, get a written casket price list before you see the actual caskets. Well, things have changed in the funeral business. You don't have gigantic rooms full of full-size caskets anymore. You might have one or two full-size caskets and then like corners of caskets or pictures of caskets in a catalog. So things have changed a bit since 1983 in the, in the business. Uh, you want to get a written statement after you decide what you want and before you pay. That's because you may get sticker shock once they add up all those costs. And that's the time when you can say, well, why don't we pick a $1,200 casket instead of a $6,000 casket? 
Uh, and then to get an explanation in a written statement from the funeral home that describes any legal cemetery or crematory requirements. Cemetery costs are separate from funeral home costs in most cases. So there's the cost of the grave, opening and closing the grave, a liner or a vault, a marker, and that can add thousands and thousands of dollars to the bill. Cremation also, you might have a funeral home that advertises $750 for a cremation, but there may be a crematory permit fee that has to be issued. We have that here in New Mexico, 210 additional dollars plus tax on top of that. So what's advertised as 750 might actually be closer to 1200. So those are some of the things to be aware of. Another uh, item I uh, read up on is that you may provide the funeral home with your own casket or earn you by elsewhere. They must let you, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And there are people who uh, sell caskets and urns online. But, you know, in the case of an urn, you could bring in a coffee can. They did that in the Big Lebowski. <laughs> uh, or you could... <laughs> um, I, I've been to a number of funerals, and I saw one couple that died within 24 hours of each other. They were both cremated, and they were both in these kind of decorative suitcases that their children had gotten at a hobby shop. And that was very creative, and you can do things like that. Well, apropos cremation, it's an increasingly popular choice. Half of Americans now uh, choose to go ashes to ashes, which is not to say scale back the funeral. Gail, how do pre-planners and survivors create meaningful memorial services when someone's been cremated? Well, in fact, you can have a funeral before the cremation takes place, and actually save money because you can rent the casket instead of having to buy it. Um, also, religion has been on the, de the decline in the United States. And when you don't have the rituals of a established religion and clergy, people don't know what to do. There has been, over the past few years, a rise in certified funeral celebrants, people who are trained to take a situation and learn all about the deceased and make a celebration of that person's life, all about that person who died, and make it a healing activity for the family, the loved ones, to actually come together and have a good goodbye for this person. And unfortunately, a lot of people think, oh, cremation, you just send the body off and they're cremated and that's it. And that is a, a disservice to the people who love that person. In fact, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, don't have a funeral for me when I, when I die. And I say, if people didn't love you, don't worry, they wouldn't go to the trouble. Wow. So it, it really is for the community and for the people who are left alive and missing that person. Yeah, a good goodbye. Hey, one of my New Year's resolutions is to make my wife a thumb drive of do this when I die information. So I am eager to read your hundred downsizing and organizing things to do before you die. Gail, what are the basics, the boxes we need to check off to spare our survivors a hassle? Uh, at the minimum, before anybody gets sick, have advanced medical directives. Let people know do everything possible to keep me alive, or if you're at that point in your life where it's like, you know, no heroic measures, if it's my time, let me go. So that's what advanced medical directives are for. You wanna to pull together your important information, including four things that go on a death certificate. Your social security number. Do you know your wife's off the top of your head? Ooh. That's an important piece of information. Mother's maiden name the place of birth, as well as your date of birth. Most people would know that. But uh, veterans information also. If you are a veteran and have an honorable discharge, a DD-214 form is needed to get free burial or interment in a national cemetery. And it would also be nice to know, you know, what kind of disposition you want. Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to donate your body to science? There are a number of options, and more are coming. You can uh, have alkaline hydrolysis, aquamation, where instead of being cremated by fire, it's a water process. 
so you can have a warm bath instead of a trip to the blast furnace. <laughs> and, and then what you might want done with those uh, final remains, you know, if, if you do have a burial plot, is it paid for? And by the way, if you're going to make arrangements in advance, it is okay to put your information and your preferences on file with a funeral home. You can pre-plan and not prepay, and then when the time comes, funeral homes take credit cards. You can think of the points, the miles. Yeah. And you, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's, that's a great way to plan ahead for your loved ones. Yeah, so and obviously let give, them know what you want. You know, give your surviving uh, spouse the uh, account numbers and passwords for everything so that your Facebook page dies with you, I guess. Uh, I got about a minute left, but confronting the inevitable needn't feel awkward. And I've read that there are now death discussion events, such as? There, over the past 10 years, the silver tsunami of baby boomers is getting people talking about our mortality. Uh, death cafes came to us from the United Kingdom. Strangers come together, have a little coffee or tea, some cake or cookies, and talk about what's on your hearts and minds about mortality issues. Sometimes that's easier to do than with your own family. And uh, the Before I Die Festival, I in fact just found out I'm getting an award for this <laughs> several day event to get people thinking about talking about and hopefully doing something about our 100% mortality rate. Thank you, Gail Rubin. A good goodbye.com.